as part of our spiritual deliverance and spiritual warfare series we talked about the principalities we talked about overcoming the world we talked about overcoming the flesh we talked about also soul ties and we talked about you know demons in the old testament demons in the new testament and today i want to touch on the topic of objects that have demons attached to them and places that have demons attached to them now hollywood calls this a paranormal activity but for us discerning Christians, you know, we really call it for what it is. It's demons lurking in the closets, in the basements, in the attics and displaying openly themselves, honestly, in sometimes our houses. These demons could be crouching behind the veils in the, of the darkness in your house. Sometimes they could actually move furniture. They could be actually talking to you through your television. And other times they're just causing havoc in your life, in your finances, in your health and in other areas of your life and unless these demons are exposed and expelled and things that have opened access to these demons in our houses and in our lives are removed we will live in torment and harassment before we go any further i would like to mention to you that spiritual power flows through the following both the power of the holy spirit and the power of demons flow through number one people if you remember in the Bible that demons can actually view you as a house. For a demon, a person is a house according to Matthew chapter 12. And we must understand is that power of God can also th flow through people. Demons can use people to harass you, torment you and cause you a lot of pain. And God can use a person to bring healing, bring deliverance and bring help to you. And sometimes we have these people in our life that we're like, man, they're like God sent angels. They have helped us. They have connected us to God because God uses people as the channels of His power and as the channels of His love. The devil uses people as well to accomplish his purposes. The second thing that demons use are places. For example, we see that demon possessed person, he lived among the tombs. We see in the contrast to that is God's presence occupied Moses' tabernacle and then the temple that Solomon built. In fact, when the tabernacle was finished, the presence of God filled the tabernacle. And when the temple was finished, the, the glory of God filled the temple. God's presence can saturate and linger in the place that was dedicated to Him. And people can walk into that place and actually experience peace. They can experience different... Um, atmosphere sometimes unbelievers would say man the vibe in, in here like the energy uh, is here is different there's like this cleanness that is here and for us as Christians we understand it's actually the presence of God that is causing a sense of relief a sense of purity and a sense of calmness to exist in a particular place same thing can happen to places that are dedicated to demons and we're going to talk about that just a little bit more in just a second is that these places have a sense of oppression these places have a sense of attack nightmares things being broken things being uh, shattered and um, these are not just fabrications and makeup that hollywood creates to fill up our movie theaters with haunted houses and with paranormal activities these are actually real stories of real people if the presence of god can affect a place you can be sure that also the presence of demons can affect a place through the means of people that are devoted and dedicated to the kingdom of darkness the second thing that demons can use and god can use are objects these are not physical these are physical but not necessarily human these are objects now we see that in book of acts 13 13 and we're going to talk about that in just a moment is that books devoted to occultism were destroyed we also see god on the on the other side was using the rod of moses we see that he was using the handkerchief of paul he was using anointing oil and also the laying on of hands to accomplish his purposes so objects can be a means that god uses to accomplish his purpose now we don't worship objects, we don't need objects, but God can use objects. Sometimes we would uh, lay hands and pray for a handkerchief and let's say we can't go to, the, to visit the person in the hospital and then that handkerchief will be placed on the sick person and the sick person will be healed. The handkerchief doesn't do the healing, it is the faith and it is the anointing that is imparted through a physical object. The same thing can happen 
with objects that witch doctors and false religions use, they can bring harm to people. And we will talk about that in just a moment. And then there's one more, uh, two more uh, things that demons and the spiritual realm uses and that is animals. We see for example that demons entered into pigs. We see that God used a donkey to speak to Balaam. So animals actually can be used by God to accomplish His purpose and they could be used by demons to propagate, to spread their agenda on this earth. Another one, um, an object I guess I would say is that both was used by God and by the enemy is trees. For example, in the Bible, the oak of Shechem was marked by God as a place where God would meet with Abram. It's where Jacob buried his family idols. It's where Joshua put up a stone at the oak of Shechem where he received a word from God. The Bible says that God tells David to listen for the sound of marching in the tops of mulberry trees in 2 Samuel chapter 5. And so we see in the pagan cultures that trees often were symbols associated with pagan worship. And so people would worship, you know, these trees and they would use them as these contact points between them and the other realm. And God would use, you know, mark his presence at the particular tree where he would encounter people like Abraham, uh, Jacob would do stuff there, Joshua would you know put a stone at the oak of Shechem because he received God's word. Okay so enough about that. God can use anything to accomplish his purpose but so is the devil. He uses things, places, people and animals. God can use things, places, people and even animals. Concerning places, I want to speak to you concerning haunted houses. Now when it comes to haunted houses, a lot of times there is something that happened in a particular place that has opened a portal or open access to demons. Murder, rape or people practiced witchcraft. They made uh, practice sorcery or they cast spells. A witch doctor lived in a particular particular place and demons just continued to linger in that place. And a new family would move in into that place and they would experience a lot of times certain headaches or certain physical illnesses or attacks. And these things, they are real. You may say, oh I'm a Christian, those things they don't affect me. Ideally, Ideally, we know that through Jesus Christ we walk under the new covenant and in Christ positionally all the curses are done with, all the demons are defeated, sin is no longer a problem. Sickness has already been healed on the cross. That is the ideally, that's positionally. But the reality is we still battle with sickness, we still battle with sin and we still battle with curses. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that the curses will be over when Jesus comes, not when Jesus died. He defeated the power of those curses, but the presence of these, presence of these curses are still at play and we have to combat and fight them. Example I would like to use is the example of Joshua. Joshua, he destroys the city of Jericho and we're going to use that story today to pretty much talk about both accursed things and places that are placed under the curse of God. Joshua destroys Jericho and then he pronounces this charge. He says, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city, Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn and with his youngest he shall set up its gates. So Joshua pretty much pronounces a curse over this place that held Israel back from conquering the promised land. And he pretty much says that when somebody is going to try to rebuild this place, his firstborn will die and then his younger will die. The youngest will die when they finish the gates. Now you will see in the first Kings chapter 16 verses 34, 500 years later, 500 years later, these words pronounced over this location, they don't evaporate, they don't disappear. 
They don't lose its power because it's been 500 years. Joshua is long gone. Okay, let me read. 1 Kings 16, 34. In his days, Hill of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundation with Abiram, his firstborn, and with his youngest son, Sagub, he set up its gates according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken through Joshua, the son of Nun. Poor guy who decided to rebuild Jerusalem, Jericho, I apologize. He should have did some digging. He should have found out a little bit of the background and things that are hanging over that place. The curse that has been pronounced over that place. A lot of times when we buy a property, we do a background check on that property. Does it have any problem underground? Meaning, does it have some kind of an oil leak or some kind of a bad thing in the soil? We would find out if that property had any liens. We would find out, you know, when that property, we would do an inspection on that property. Find out how much more, how many more years does the roof has? How many more years does the heater and the AC units? You know, we will find out the, the elect electrical things. We will find out things about plumbing. And that is the wise thing to do. Now, for those of you who are maybe like, oh, I don't care about that. You know, God puts on my heart to buy this property and I'm going to buy it. No, every person will do enough investigation before they buy it. When it comes to the spiritual components of that location and of that particular piece of real estate, most of us don't even give one thought about it. And me talking about it, there will be people who will listen to this and they will say, wow, you're over-spiritualizing everything. Wow, you see demon behind every rock. Wow, Vlad, that, that is pushing it. That's stretching it. Really? I don't think so. I think that we should give attention to the spiritual realm and the claim that the spiritual realm has to a particular piece of real estate that we want to purchase. We should do basic background on who lived there before. You know, um, what, what did they do? And this doesn't mean that we shouldn't buy it, but we should also do a spiritual warfare and break any curses that are associated with that property. Because spiritual world is real. And spiritual world operates through locations, through places and through real estate. God set up His presence in the Garden of Eden. And when man committed sin, God protected that place. God set His presence in the tabernacle. He set His presence in the temple. Now in the New Testament, He sets His presence in us. But this does not mean that the presence of God cannot mark a particular place. Every pastor would know. We pray that God will mark with His presence our local churches. That when people will come there, they will feel His presence, experience His love. We pray for the same thing for our homes, to become these places like Jacob did when he laid on the rock and he had a dream and he says, Oh my goodness, this is a house of God. This has a ladder to heaven. There's angels ascending and descending at this piece of real estate. You should do some kind of digging concerning the places you purchase. Not just concerning the places, also concerning the vehicles. Now when you're buying a new car, it's a little bit different, but when you're buying a car that is not new, you should do some background on who was the person that drove that car. If you bought a used car that went through a car accident, you probably need to pray for your car. You may say, now for some of you this may sound strange. You're like, what? That is stretching a lot. That is kind of pushing, over-spiritualizing everything. It's not over-spiritualizing. It's understanding the world is way more spiritual than we realize. In my uh, book, Break Free, I mentioned a story about James Dean, a car racer who owned Porsche Spider, who it was referred to actually as a death car or a little bastard. James Dean, he acquired this vehicle to race in California. 
Now, many of his friends, they actually did a research on his car and they warned him not to drive it or else he will be dead within a week. And that's exactly what happened. A week later, James Dean died on the way to the race racetrack in a terrible car accident. Because this race car was been, has been driven by a very famous person, all the parts of this car were sold at a very high price. The engine from the Dean's original car was placed in another car which was later involved in an accident and guess what? Killed the driver. Then another, drive, another driver, he bought the drivetrain that was part of this Porsche and he gets injured when his vehicle rolls over. It was reported that the two tires that went to the young man who sold two tires from this race car where the driver died. Eventually it happened that they blew out at the same time in the race causing him to lose control and he ended up in a ditch. Additionally, while the Porsche Spider was being stored in a Californian garage, the structure caught on fire and everything was destroyed except for the car. Later on, a truck driver was transporting this car and lost control of his truck and apparently the little bastard or this poor spider car fell off of the flatbed and crushed him to death. There was even more examples of what happened that I didn't mention or I won't mention here and pretty much it's just a good reminder that your vehicle can um, end your life. We all know people who died in a car accident. But have you ever thought about the fact that your car can be used by the enemy? Have you ever thought about the fact that your car can be cursed? Mm -hmm. Think about it. If everyone who had it died, it should give you a little warning. I'm not saying not to use that car. I'm just saying that you probably need to pray for your car. Every car that I bought from somebody else, especially cars that went through a wreck, a wreck or an accident, I prayed for them. I don't know if they have a curse or not, but if somebody died or was injured, I don't want that to linger in my life. I want that car to get me from point A to point B, not from point A to my funeral. I want to die at God's time not because there is a curse that's attached to the vehicle that I drive. And so it's a good thing to just pray for it and say, Lord, I dedicate this vehicle to you and may this serve your purposes. And I break any curses that are attached to this vehicle. Curses of accidents, curses of drunk driving, curses of accident prone or curses of death. And the same thing can be done to a house. Now, when it comes to a house, there's few things that you can do to break curses over a haunted house. If you're noticing that in your house you have furniture moving, TV is turning on, uh, people are constantly getting sick. Everything was fine until you moved into that house and now your kids are not doing good in school. There's rebellion in among your kids, you know, maybe your spouse, you're having problems with your spouse. I'm not saying that we should all just go and blame the house or the curses in the house. But if you're noticing that there's a shift that took place in your life ever since you moved in that place, I would encourage you to consider, I'm not saying this might be the case for every person, to consider of the fact that the place you are in has some demons attached to it. Sometimes when I would travel and in a particular hotel, like there would be this demonic attacks during the night. And you wake up and you know you actually are in a place where there's a lot more witchcraft or demonic things that were done in particularly in that room. And because you went in, you didn't pray for it, you didn't dedicate it to God, you know, you're getting these harassments and these attacks. And today I want to encourage you and give you practical steps on how to break these curses over your house. I remember um, when a person moved into a rental and they were notified that every person, which was weird information actually to hear from your landlord, that every person who moved into this rental got divorced. 
And when they did a little bit of digging, they found out that in that house, somebody committed suicide. And after that, every person that rented that house got divorced. Divorce is a death of a relationship. And so unless you break that curse and you walk under the blood of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit, you will live under the consequences of those curses, not even knowing that. So the goal is not necessarily to go and do a very deep research into the house that you own, but you can ask around the neighbors. You can ask around the person that sold you the house. Hey, tell me a little bit more information. What activities were happening here? Who lived here? And then that helps you to know what was happening there. I remember me and my wife, we bought a rental property when we got married a year into our marriage. We bought a really rundown drug house. One side of it was remodeled, the other side of it was so bad the windows were broken. I mean it was in a very terrible shape. I kind of went and asked the neighbors about this particular property and they told me that everyone did drugs there. It was like a drug hub of that neighborhood. Police was always there arresting drug addicts and drug dealers. And they also said they did some other shady stuff which they didn't go into details on what the shady stuff were, but it gave me enough information to know that I am walking into a very, honestly, compromising and spiritually compromising place. And so before we actually started to remodel that place, I took a lot of oil, a lot of oil, okay? I actually sprayed those walls with oil. Um, now because I would, you know, repaint them eventually and like scrape off all the paint. So that's why I anointed all the walls with oil. But I start going in and just looking if there's any kind of witchcraft uh, things that were put into the, uh, you know, by the walls or something like that. I found a few things, threw them away, burned them, anointed uh, that place with oil, prayed over that place. And then we started the construction. We lived there, praise God, there was no problems. And then we sold it for a very good price to other people. Now that is how sometimes we all kind of have to do just a basic spiritual cleansing of the house. So let me give you some practical things that you can do. Number one, if there is a demon in your house, only the power of Jesus Christ can drive it out. Claim the name of Jesus and declare the power of His blood. Okay. Number two, find out about prior occupants of the house and what they did to attract curses. Number three, check the attic, basement, crawl space, garage and throw out anything that could attract evil spirits. Sometimes there are potions, sometimes there are charms, sometimes there are um, other things that are pretty obvious like you, you're not gonna go and you know break every single drywall and remove um, you know the foundation of the house to find out what's really there but sometimes things are just obvious and if those things are there you throw them out and then number four is you anoint the house windows and doors with the anointing oil number five is you anoint the four corners of your property with the anointing oil you can also write scripture verses on the short stake you know um, and anoint them with oil as well or in some kind of a pole and put it in the ground to remind evil spirits that the property has been dedicated to the Lord. Uh, some people actually write on the drywall and then they paint it a verse that this house belongs to the Lord or on the foundation. Um, but the idea is that you want to anoint every opening into your house and you want to anoint the four corners of your property and declare the name of Jesus. Um, not long ago actually, I felt like there was an attack on the house that I currently live. My wife had a dream that somebody was trying to do some potions to bring destruction to our life. And then the next day we saw this very weird, it looked like a dead bird, but it, it also, it looked like a charm that was done inside of our yard. Now interesting part is that we have security cameras and the other part is we also have a dog and this dog is mean and he barks at everything. So I have no idea how that thing ended up in our backyard. And so anyway we threw it away, burned it, uh, prayed against it, etc. Sometime later, not long after, I'm looking in my front yard there are organs of an animal 
that are broken like it's almost like something ate like an animal ate another animal and left just like organs uh, with blood on the sidewalk and that it went into the lawn of my house and that night I had a very big demonic attack and I come out and I see that and I was like what's happening and so I was actually I went to the morning prayer on Sunday morning and I asked you know our pastors to pray for me as well just to kind of you know cover me with prayer if there's anything that the enemy maybe I have opened um, intentionally or inten un unintentionally they prayed for me and then I came home threw that away burned it took the oil and actually did exactly same thing again over my house anointed the four corners anointed every opening every door and every window and you know praise God I don't see anything happening anymore so I'm just encouraging you that's something that I practice and I encourage people to practice as well um, this is your house and it belongs to God but you do have to claim it and you do have to take authority over that amen now one thing that before I continue if this is helping anybody would you drop number one in the chat if you are re-watching this right now I welcome you appreciate you being with me I want to remind you that we're talking about haunted houses we're talking about different means that the enemy and God can use and we're also going to be talking right now about objects dedicated to demons we're using the story of Joshua as he cursed the place where Jericho was destroyed and then 500 years later people who tried to rebuild that place actually suffered heavy consequences and so when we buy a place a car or a house and we don't know its history and we don't practice wisdom and discernment we can actually find ourselves dealing with certain things that we should have not had dealt with if we dealt with the root cause of those problems now I'm going to talk about now where rubber meets the road accursed things now accursed objects are objects that have had the opposite of blessing done to them instead of grace being attached to an object to make it holy a demon has been attached to the object to make it associate with evil now some of you may say what a grace can be attached to an object yes think about it. holy communion we take very simple bread grape juice or some churches do wine but it becomes holy becomes something that represents something sacred to us same thing with anointing oil it's just a virgin oil but when it's prayed with the name of Jesus it becomes the means that the Lord uses to heal the sick if communion elements if anointing oil can be used of God I can assure to you that so is charms and objects can have demons attached to them now there's a distinction between a cursed object and an object that's been impacted by demonic infestation now infestation refers to a right that demon have over a particular area or place to carry out their extraordinary manifestations in specific locations such as house and sometimes they could be moving an object like a chair a table a door a tv that's not actually cursed it's just a normal object but because demons and the curses are present in that place they they can move those objects that could seem like oh my goodness that object is cursed when in reality it's just a demon and a curse that is using an object within a place and once the demon is out curse is broken those objects are back to being under your control and your use but there are objects that are cursed in themselves and they bring demons and curses to a place that these objects are welcomed to now let me read to you some verses in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 25 and 26 it says the following you shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire you shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them nor take it for yourselves lest you be snared by it for it is an abomination to the Lord your God nor shall you bring an abomination into your house 
lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. Now, let's read also from the story of Joshua. Joshua chapter 7 verses 10, 11 and 12. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up, why do you lie thus in your face? Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commended them. They have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived. They have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turned their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. That's the same word for accursed, doomed to destruction, devoted to destruction, put under a ban. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Now that's a mouthful, three verses. I'm gonna break this down. A few things that I believe cursed things are. Number one, accursed things bring suffering to the whole house. Actually no, no, no. Number one is accursed things are occult objects devoted or used in paganism, witchcraft on a or occult. Accur accursed things are devoted to demons, objects devoted to demons or objects used in worship of demons connecting with the deity that these pagan religions or occult you know seeks to connect with. The word accursed is actually it means a thing devoted, thing dedicated, ban, devotion, a net, thing perforated, have been utterly destroyed or appointed to utter destruction. So it's something that's been devoted. Like you remember in the Old Testament, God would devote particular articles to His service and they were made holy. Now the same article, the same piece of equipment you could have in your own house, a utensil, is for common use. But once it was devoted to God, it was no longer common, it was holy. So we see in Jericho, so much of the city of Jericho was devoted to demons. The whole land of Canaan was like that. And God specifically tells Israel, it's also a test for them, to destroy accursed things. And He puts a ban on all the stuff in Jericho. But silver gold, He says, I want you to dedicate it to me, to my uh, service, to my ministry. Now, what begins to happen is everyone follows that, except one guy, Achan. His name actually means serpent. And he takes some of that gold, he takes some of that Babylonian garment, and he takes some of the silver and he puts it under his tent. They go to the next city and they experience defeat. In fact, 36 soldiers, including this guy's family later on, they paid with their life. So let's start again. Accursed things are things that are devoted to demons or used in witchcraft or pagan religion. The second thing I want you to know about accursed things is once you have them, they bring suffering to your house. They don't bring suffering to those who made them. They bring suffering to those who took them. Jericho was destroyed because of their sin. But because Achan brought that into the tent, the nation of Israel suffered consequences. His house both biological house, his family, and his spiritual house, Israel, came under defeat. Now, if you notice that there are defeats 
suffering in your life like for example something is devouring your prosperity there's confusion and frustration illness sickness and disease you're under constant attack there is a, like an oppression you're being vexed people constantly take what is yours you're being rejected at every turn there's fears and phobias and an attack on your mental state it could be a sign not that you are doing something wrong but that you are in possession of something that has a legal access to bring defeat into your life i remember hearing derek prince's story when he was struggling financially and as a minister he was very generous he fasted a lot he prayed a lot but he just could not financially break through he adopted also children so he really needed financial support he was hard working he wasn't lying or cheating and one day he says when he was praying he noticed that in his living room there was a painting with dragons now this particular painting was passed on to him by his father and then passed on to his father from his grandfather his grandfather was the one that actually was in in the military and he received this painting in China it was given to him and it meant so much it had this like preciousness to it because it's been passed on from one generation to another and then it meant something to this Chinese culture that gave it to his grandfather so he has this painting it's of great value and as he's looking at the painting of dragons which you don't even need to have a discernment a lot of discernment to know the dragons, snakes, skulls, they represent death. And he gets this quickening that this is not right. These dragons are looking at me. And the Holy Spirit gave him this insight. These dragons are eating your prosperity. Now, before you log off and think that I'm crazy, I'm just sharing you his story. He throws away the dragons, the painting. It was painful. The reason why is because of what it represented, of how much it meant to the family. This wasn't just about dragons. This is a legacy from his grandfather. And he says within a very short time, I don't remember right now, but it was very short time, his finances quadrupled. I think within less than 12 months or so. He said, I did nothing different something just changed all the hard work that I had that I did now was able I was able to reap the benefits of my hard labor maybe you are facing similar things are you hosting hiding protecting objects in your house in your possession that are at best questionable at worst I mean purely demonic and you can justify it and say oh these are just artifacts I'm just I'm into fashion oh I just love how they look oh you look you know I, I just don't believe there's a demon behind this stuff you can believe whatever you want your belief doesn't make things true or not true you can believe that Satan doesn't exist it doesn't change the fact he's real you can believe that demonic objects have no power over your life but if they do, your belief doesn't change anything. If these demonic objects wouldn't have any power, why, why did God tell Israel to burn them? Why did God tell Israel not to allow those statues, those gods, those little things that other nations worshipped? Why did God say, well, leave them for decoration? As a reminder of the historical artifacts, why go and burn everything? Why destroy the history of Canaan? You know, let it be there as a reminder for historical purposes. If they had no power, if they were mere objects, why bother burn them? Why bother warn people? Why will Babylonian garment cause the death of 36 soldiers? Because these are 
objects that have spirits attached to them. And if you're still not convinced, may I remind you, anointing oil, communion elements and other elements and other objects we use like handkerchiefs and others in ministry to other people, they don't have power in themselves but power flows through them. So accursed objects are objects devoted to demons or used in the service of demons. Number two is they can bring suffering to the whole house. Number three is they are an abomination to the Lord. You're not an abomination to the Lord. But those things are an abomination to the Lord. Why? Because they're a constant reminder of someone's rebellion toward God. When people begin to conjure up spells, when people begin to use potions, when people begin to use astrology, when people begin to use zodiac signs, Ouija boards to connect with the spirit realm, it's a slap in God's face to say, we don't need your way to get to truth. We have our own way. And when you bring things like these into your possession, these artifacts into your house, they, these things, not you, it's an abomination to God. And don't use the idea of beauty and desirability or the fact that, oh, I went on the trip and it was a souvenir. Like, that doesn't change it. Aiken could have easily said, yeah, I just brought a souvenir into my tent from Jericho. God didn't want them to have a souvenir. He wanted them to destroy those objects. Not to preserve them for historical references, but to destroy them because of so much things that were attached to them that was demonic. The next truth about accursed things is that if you allow accursed things into your possession, you will lose in spiritual warfare. Have you noticed how God said to Joshua, because of accursed things, you can't stand in front of your enemies. Now, one of the signs that a person has, this is not the only sign or the reason why people are losing in the spiritual battle is not only because of this, I want to make it clear, but one of the signs is that they begin to lose in the spirit realm. And sometimes you notice that you become beaten, afflicted and attacked by demons in your sleep, in your thoughts and just even in your emotions and you, you kind of feel it, it's spiritual, it's, it's not normal, it's not good and it might be a good time to examine your life, your house, your apartment and your car and see which things have you allowed and I'm going to mention them in just a moment, some of the things that we need to get rid of today but you lose in a spiritual battle if you allow demonic objects in your house. It's interesting because when God rebukes and corrects Joshua, He uses few words. He says, Israel has sinned. So the word sin means to miss God's mark. Israel has transgressed my covenant. Transgression is actually, it's kind of like trespa trespassing. So Israel pretty much went beyond the border the boundary of what was allowed it. Meaning they have crossed the border. It's like when you're trespassing somebody's property, you know, there are consequences for that. And God says not only Israel has missed the mark, but Israel has went beyond the border of what was allowed. And then it says they've taken of the accursed things. So accursed things are things under a curse. And then he says this, they have stolen. So not only they've taken the accursed thing, not only they have crossed the God's boundaries, went outside of God's boundaries, pretty much jumped the fence but they have also missed the mark and then on the top of that they have stolen. And that's another thing I want to mention is that sometimes when you allow these accursed things, one of the reasons they're dangerous is because they begin to lower your, your fight against sin. It actually can lead to other sins, trespassing, stealing and deception. It happened with Israel it can happen to you and I. Sin has a domino effect. You give it an inch, it becomes a ruler. You begin to kind of entertain, you know, at first it's like, oh yeah, no big deal, I'm just reading about witchcraft. Oh, no big deal, I'm just reading about spells. I'm not gonna do them, but I just want, I'm just curious about spells. And then next thing you know, you know, you're okay with watching porn. And next thing you know, 
you're okay with hanging dream catchers and next thing you know you're okay with a little bit of tarot cards next thing you know you're not reading the bible <laughs> you're reading zodiac signs and next thing you know this leads to another thing to another thing to another thing to another thing it's just important that we live a holy life we don't need the stars to know our future we need the, the word of god we need the holy spirit we don't need any dream catcher to catch bad dreams we need deliverance instead of a dream catcher we don't need a good luck charm on our wrist to help us find prosperity no we need to work hard we need to live generous and we need to trust in God to provide for us and so as we begin to de devote our life a hundred percent it may seem narrow-minded to people around us it may seem like oh man you're so spiritual like you're earthly no good not really you can't be spiritual so spiritual that you're earthly no good but you can be so earthly that you're no good heavenly no good spiritually well, i'm talking about living a life without sin living a life without trespassing living a life without allowing cursed things into our possession and living a life where we don't steal what belongs to god in regards to our giving in regards to giving our alms in regards to giving when god tells us to give forgiving when god tells us to forgive loving when God tells us to love and when we don't hold that back but we release that we walk in righteousness and we walk in godliness. Now another thing about the accursed things is that if you hold on to the accursed things they will make you into a cursed person. Now where did I get this idea from? You remember how I read earlier where it says God says to Israel he says that Israel has put it among their stuff and then he says, then therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. They turned their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Interestingly, in the original language, the word doomed to destruction is the same word for accursed. So Israel has taken the accursed and God says Israel now cannot stand before their enemies because they have been doomed. So initially it was Jericho that was doomed accursed. Now it's Israel that's accursed. How is that? Because if you keep holding on to that which the Lord makes it very clear like you shouldn't be having those things, sooner or later that curse begins to touch your life. You become, come under the power of that curse. Now before Israel was able to remove, burn, that accursed things they had to identify it in fact it took a while to identify it you know Joshua was praying God spoke to him and says dude you got a problem and it's in your own house the problem is not with the enemy that it is stronger the problem is that you got some you got some leaks you got some holes you, you got some problems Joshua and you got to deal with that and then God doesn't tell Joshua who has this accursed thing Joshua goes down through the tribes, through the families and finally identifies. And so I want to encourage you today to do the same thing with your life. If you noticed the Holy Spirit is prompting you to just check your house. A few things I will recommend you. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what's causing hindrance of the spiritual breakthrough in your life. And then start with the obvious. Check the closets, your office, basement, your backyard, your storage, your glove box in your car, scan your digital space like your photos and check what's there that doesn't honor Jesus, doesn't honor the Holy Spirit. Maybe there are artifacts of your ex, maybe there are demonic objects. Let's go through a few of those things. Maybe there are symbols, pottery or jewelry by Native American religion. A lot of the jewelry pottery and symbols by Native Americans served as spirit guides like Thunderbird jewelry, like pottery that considered um, particular pottery that considered you know like hey this is like a, a, a strong thing and it controlled the underworld. A certain um, carvings that had symbols and figures some kind of necklaces, bird tracks, broken arrows, cactus and cedar wood, uh, cedar wood and then corn plant and crow, crows and cosmic 
Macros and Coyote and Dancer, Deer Tract and Dragonfly, Drums and Feathers and Hawks and Hummingbirds and um, Knife Wing and Medicine Wheel and Morning Star and Rainbow Men and Ravens and Spiders and Sun and Turkey and Wolves. All of these signs and all of these symbols and all of these um, depictions, a lot of times they have spiritual meaning for these people who made them and they're connected to the energy, to uh, the spirit guides and to the spirits that are supposed to protect you and you may have gotten it as a souvenir. You may be like, man, I don't add any meaning to that stuff. Like, I don't believe it just looks nice. I want to be nice to those, uh, God bless them, Native Americans and I just went to the reservation and, and that's it. You know, don't be naive as a Christian who understands the spiritual world. Now, if you don't believe in the spiritual world and you think all of this is just a bunch of jump, honestly, turn off the video and go watch something funny and like it's completely useless to you. But we believe there's a spiritual realm that created this realm and we believe that that spiritual realm affects this realm more than we imagine. We believe that we are eternal on the inside. We will live forever. Our thoughts are not visible but they are real. We believe that the real us is invisible but it's real. It's like the us that when we die our body will be there but us will not be there. That us is not visible so we believe in the invisible realm. And a lot of these symbols and these pottery and jewelry made by Native Americans. I'm not dissing on Native Americans. I'm not, this is not attacking the culture. This is just talking about the fact that the culture was deeply and it still is deeply embedded with witchcraft. The other thing that you need to look over in your house and in your car and in your possession is symbols and objects representing the new age like third eye, unicorn horn, astrology, crystal stones, gems, burning incense of herbs to cleanse your house from demons, rainbow in the heart, sun god, things that have to do with yoga because you know yoga means to yoke with and things that have to do with new age or represent the new age. Now the challenge with new age, it, new age is not necessarily worshiping the devil, it's, it's worshiping all of these other spirit guides as well as you know universe and energy and connecting with that and there's a lot of videos that I have on my YouTube channel, Everett has on his YouTube channel that you can check it out, how a lot of these things and the drugs that are involved with new age, psychedelics that are involved with new age, they open doors to demons. And so even if you're not using in that and you are not believing in that, you're not using that, throw that stuff away. Symbols and objects representing witchcraft, zodiacs, Ouija boards, tarot cards, automatic writing, psychic books, ritualistic cups, sacred salts, burning sage, statues, charms, wood dolls, wood pins, witchcraft books, spell books, witching sticks, crystal balls and so much more that belong to witchcraft. These things are being used by witchcraft. They have powers attached to them and as a Christian you have no business having those things in your possession any more than Non-Christians don't carry anointing oil in their purse. Why? Because they don't follow Jesus. They don't follow the Holy Spirit and you're not following that, you're following Jesus. And you should not have those objects, those symbols and those things in your possession. Another one is good luck charms. Rabbit's food, four leaf clovers and lucky horseshoe charms, fuzzy eyes, ladybug charms, lucky number charms, rainbow good luck charms, lucky pennies, patron signs, necklaces and wish makers, astray eyelashes and cat's eye and anything that pretty much is gonna give you good luck. Uh, people wear crucifixes sometimes, they wear uh, different kind of bracelets or jewelry, you know this will this will protect you on the road, this will protect you when you sleep, this will, this will give you good luck. They have demons attached to those things. We don't believe in luck, we believe in favor and God gives us that when we humble ourselves and the fear of the Lord leads to wisdom and that leads to God's favor. The other one is symbols, images, statues of other religions. Now things like Books of Mormon, a statue of Mary holding Jesus, crucifixes with Jesus remaining on them. You may say, what's wrong with that? 
I'm not against a crucifix. What I'm against is when Jesus is hanging on the crucifix. Why? Because He's no longer there. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. He's not hanging on the cross anymore. Satanic Bible, candles for rituals, statues of saints, statue of Angel Moroni, Mormon star, and so much, so much more. Uh, things that are used by Freemasons and things that are used by other religions, their books, their sacred writings. Now, if you're a person that you have to read that for school or you have to read that as part of your apologetics, apologetics, that's different. But when you are curiously interested in learning more and so that, uh, you know, you can learn about other religions because in your mind all religions lead to the same place, then you are on a dangerous ground because the Bible says there's only one way to God and that way is Jesus. Another one is demonic games like Dungeons and Dragons, The Witching Hour, Dark Souls, um, LGBT dolls, LGBT Legos, LGBT books and other things that are they're demonic and they are profane in their nature. Music and movies that show extreme violence, horror, satanic rituals and porn are open portals to the enemy. And there's so much more. I've just mentioned a few. As you go through your house, as you go through your um, closet, as you go through your car, if you notice things, and this is what I tell people, when you're in doubt, throw it out. Sometimes, you know, guys would wear a shirt like, oh, but I love this. It's like a, uh, you know, a skeleton or a skull or like death or a demon. It's like, why do you want to wear that? You know, why do you want to wear death? You know, wear something that has life. You know, wear Hungry Gen or, or go to our store and buy something that like Demon Slayer or something that honors Jesus. Um, and then just, just throw stuff out. So you may say, so what do I do if I identify some things and they are definitely not from God? Um, so accursed things, and that's the last thing that I'm going to share with you, they must be burned with fire. Joshua chapter 7 verse 25 and says this, Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Acts chapter 19 verse 19 it says also many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all and they all counted up the value of them and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Exodus 32 20 then he took the calf, an idol, an object which they made, burned it in fire, in the fire and ground it to powder and scattered it on the water and made Israel drink it. Yeah, Moses was brutal. Um, so you see that pretty much the same rule is to burn it with fire. I remember there was a person who came uh, for deliverance and as we were praying for deliverance, she got delivered and then um, she went back home and she started to manifest again in her house. Like um, prior to this manifestation of demons, she wasn't able to work for about a month and she had this unstopping anxiety, puking, throwing up and just she couldn't be at peace. So she didn't go to work for one month and a half. So we arrived at her house and I usually don't do that but at the time you know our church was a lot smaller so I had a lot more free time and we came to her house me and my cousin Ilya decided to pray for her in her house as her house her house was actually pretty empty so I asked her what's going on she said well my ex-boyfriend just moved out and uh, I knew that she had an ex-boyfriend and as we're praying over her she's literally in the bathroom on her knees puking and throwing up non-stop like I have never seen anything like this where when somebody during deliverance for about a few hours can be throwing up bucket, I'm not exaggerating, a bucket of stuff. Like I don't know where she, where the stuff came from. And then she goes to her house and she's still puking. I was like, D like you don't have anything to puke anymore and she's still puking. She can't stop puking. And so as we're praying for the house, for her to stop puking, I've noticed uh, over the door there is a uh, prayer in Spanish and I don't know Spanish but I do know Diablo and so I saw word Diablo in Spanish on a prayer piece of paper over the front door of the house from the inside. So we pulled her out from the puking and said hey uh, could you tell me what this is? 
And so she says, oh, when my boyfriend was in Mexico, he went to one of the ladies. She was Catholic. She, she was making sure that I knew that she was Catholic. And I was like, what is that even supposed to mean? She's like, oh, she had a Bible and a crucifix and Virgin Mary statue. But this lady pretty much created a spiritual bond between her ex-boyfriend and her that if she or he ever separate from each other, that they will be in torment and it will not be well with them. And I said, okay. And she says, and this lady gave these little statues and these little objects for her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend to bring and leave him in the house with this prayer of protection. That's what she called it. And so I asked her to bring those objects. I mean, those objects were those objects were demonic like they were they were like demonic in nature they didn't even resemble anything even if they would resemble Christianity like we, we don't need those objects we don't need those statues in our houses so and I said listen I said you were put under a spell and I was like as long as the moment your boyfriend moved out this these things started to, to happen she's like yeah exactly the next day when he moved out I can't function I went to the therapist I went to the doctor she worked in medical world and she said everybody said oh no you're just grieving him she's like I don't even like the guy I'm okay that he already moved out she's like I, but I, I can't stop crying and I can't stop throwing up and so we asked for her permission to dispose of these objects and we renounced them threw them away guys God is my witness instantly I'm not talking about in five minutes I'm not talking about in an hour within 60 seconds when those things were disposed of and thrown away her face switched like somebody turned on a switch not only her face went normal she stopped puking she stopped throwing up she stopped crying and I think within a day she went back to work and um and God restored her life and so these things they work I'm not saying every single time if you have a problem that there's something in your house but we, we do have to pay attention to what we bring into our home what we bring into our car what we wear and so that they don't represent and um, connection to the the spiritual world and that they don't bring demons I encourage you to do that in your own house application of this message is not necessarily me praying for you but you putting this into practice and then cleansing your house from anything from anything that is not pleasing to the Lord and things that might have a connection to the kingdom of darkness but um, somebody asked actually how's her ex-boyfriend actually we led him to the Lord so he came back to Christ and um, and then if I'm not mistaken I think they actually were married after that after he came back he started to come to church and so uh, things were broken over the uh, he was so afraid I think that's what he told me he was so afraid that she will leave him that he went to a witch he, he didn't know it was a witch he thought it was just a grandma that will pray for him but um but he was she was a witch because he was not born again at the time and so and she put this spell spiritually bound them but that was broken and um and as far as I know until today they're still together and uh, so let's pray right now for you father I pray in the name of Jesus for every person that is watching and re-watching this stream who might like Aiken maybe have taken something into their house, into their life. Um, maybe people who have soul ties and they have objects and gifts from the people that walked away from their life and they keep missing them, they keep seeing nightmares. Lord, I pray that you will begin to just bring freedom right now. Lord, I pray for people who are being harassed and attacked in their own home. Those who are for some reason are afraid of the dark. Those who for some reason they can't sleep at peace, they struggle with insomnia but they did not have that until they moved into that house. For some reason they're fighting and on the edge of divorce but everything was fine up to the point that they moved into that house. Lord together with my viewers I come against every curse that has been placed, pronounced or spoken over this piece of real estate. I come against every spell in Jesus mighty name. Lord, by the power of your blood, let it be broken. We renounce that right now in Jesus' name. Precious Holy Spirit, I ask you that your fire will come right now, that your glory will come right now, that you will bring deliverance and that you will bring freedom into that house. Lord, I pray that you will identify objects and identify items that need to be disposed of and burned in Jesus' mighty name. 
Give your people wisdom. Help us to walk in wisdom and holiness. Help us to walk in spiritual victory and spiritual authority. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.